Hi guys, Redneck Computer Geek. Mostly this channel is about really constructive builds, things like a gas powered power wheel, things like mud mowers, different things of that nature. But I like to do tool reviews when I come across a new tool or something that I'm changing to or things like that. Or if I have something I've used for a long time. So today we're going to be unboxing. This is a Chicago Electric. It's a 10 inch 15 amp table saw. I'll show you the quick little walk around of the box. So basically, I was cutting the roof plate in order to make a roof for our cow that we're raising up. And the saw caught, pinched the blade. Next thing I know, all of a sudden there's white smoke. Everybody yells, are you okay? Did you catch yourself on fire? And you know the drill. And I had that skill 3310 for almost 10 years. It worked really good. It was actually a Walmart saw. So I started bouncing around and I started looking for a new saw to replace it with. And I really didn't want to spend a lot. And I came across this Chicago Electric. And the funny thing is, I'll post up a photo of this Chicago Electric and I'll post up a photo of the skill saw. They literally look almost identical. Now, it's a known fact that Harbor Freight kind of has a habit of ripping off other manufacturers. The Predator engines, the 6.5 is blatantly a Honda clone. You've got their Badlands winches, which are blatantly copies of Super winches. Stuff like that. Is this saw a clone of the skill saw? I don't know, but we'll take a look. So let's get unboxed. This is actually what it was shipped in at their usual flat rate, $7.00. And it's in really good shape. I was very impressed with the structure of the box. It's still well intact. We're gonna get it cut open. Now, one of the things to note about this saw is that when you go to buy it, something the skill saw had over it is that the stand that they show in the photo is listed as an optional item. So in other words, I'm expecting this not to have the stand in the photo according to the way the sale was written. So the funny thing will be if my skill saw stand bolts onto it. So the foam that's around the outside edges is just standard packing foam. It's probably five-eighths of an inch thick or so. For you Canadians, about two centimeters. And it looks pretty good. So I'm assuming it's just a pull up and lift out. Bag wasn't even around it, just laid on top. It's always nice. So I'm gonna set this box down to the floor and then I'm gonna lift the unit out there's a couple of items jostled in underneath it that seem to be freewheeling it. We'll go from there. All right, so I'm gonna turn this around facing towards you guys and I'm gonna try and work from over the top of it. So yeah, this blatantly looks a lot like the skill saw, but I can tell you one thing, the quality on this surface is nowhere near as good. Um, this is very rough. I definitely am probably going to go across it with some fine sandpaper because it's extremely rough. Um, definitely a lot of defects in it. There's a bunch of different casting defects that are not in the skill saw. Definitely lower quality plastic. All right, so one thing I can see right now is that there is a giant block of foam inside underneath. So I'm going to tip it up and we'll see what that's all about. The 
Yeah. So they put in foam, apparently a really decent size, so that the motor wouldn't move, I'm assuming. It's actually really, really thick. I'd say that's at least an inch and a quarter thick press foam. That's interesting. I don't quite see how that's supposed to come out. I guess we'll have to read those funny things called directions. Alright, so let's look at what else is in the box since I'm hoping there are directions that tell me how to get this giant block of foam the hell out of my way. We got one baggie. Got a push arm, which later I'm going to put a photo of it next to the one from Skill. Got our bar so we can lock down. Yet again, I'll put it next to the one from Skill. And we got a box. Jiggly box. Makes all kinds of noise. Luckily, the four-year-old doesn't need a new maraca. So inside of the box, we've got wrench from changing blades, kickback teeth, A guide. I can tell you one thing that's cool about this versus the skill is that this bar attachment did not come with the skill saw when I bought that one. And that is actually really cool. This is really light. Definitely not steel of any kind. I'm betting it's probably some sort of zinc or aluminum alloy. I'm betting zinc, judging from the fact that it makes a tinging noise, rather than a thunk like aluminum usually does. Safety guards. Yet again, more of some, some sort of alloy been painted to cover up the fact they're junky. And the bar, which goes to the handle on the front. Oh, goes that way. There we go. So that's your handle for the front. That's a Phillips screwdriver. and feet in order to be able to set it on top of a tabletop. Apparently they just drop right into those corners. Looks like they're just pressed in. There we go, no big deal. I'm gonna take that back out because I'm gonna try putting the base from the other saw on there. And directions. Let's see if we can't figure out how to get that stupid piece of foam out. Whoop, oh, is there something else in there? Random washer. I'm assuming that probably goes to this handle piece. Yeah, there we go. Alright, so I'm going to do the uh, video editing thing of reading these directions for five milliseconds when, I don't know, I'm a redneck, it takes me a long time to read, and see if there's anything about getting this block of foam the hell, heck out of my way. You know what's funny? There isn't a bloody thing in this entire instruction manual on how to get the big giant block of foam out of your way. But yet, there are 28 there's a two-page list, 28 items long, about saw safety and warnings. Except for you can't use a blade thing because there's foam in the way. All right. So, let me show you what's going on here. So one piece
piece of foam was right here, just popped right out. The other piece of foam is in here. Your motor is behind here, obviously. It wraps around the motor, right here, and goes under it. And the motor mounts to this whole bunch of hodgepodge. So I'm not quite sure how that was supposed to come out. I think what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to take probably a wood saw or something and make a horrific mess that I'm going to get in trouble for later and cut down through here, down to the engine, snap this piece off, Hi. and Hi, I've been all around this there. thing. I've tried a couple of different ideas. We're just going to go with the manly version of opening it. So this is a Stanley. Um, these are the shark two saws. I love these. These are amazing. If you ever need one of these smaller saws, totally recommend it. Um, on the motor, if you look, you can see that the electrical cable is coming out on this side. So we're just going to cleave it down through, come out right next to the motor, see what happens. I'm the one who sweeps the floor anyway, so whatever. go as planned. Um, Alright, let's try that again. Oh. oh, apparently it was wrapped down in there too. Apparently it goes around the whole bloody motor. Somewhere somebody has got to have directions for this. This is stupid. Um... Okay, let's just keep breaking parts out, I guess. Hey, wait a minute. That just shifted. I got an idea. If we undo the angle adjuster, we take this and we pull this way. Aha! There it goes. Hi, right, so, <laughs> folks, you undo the angle adjuster, you pull it sideways, <laughs> it would have come out. So anyways, I'll flip it over. Put the saw blade up through so that you can see it. All right, there we go. We found it randomly bouncing around the box. That uh, kind of would have been nice to be in a bag. So we're going to push that through the back. Put that in the front. Don, stop making stupid comments. I can hear you, which means they can hear you. Yes, stop. All right, there we go. So we got our lifting handle installed. That just cranks around. Apparently it's bent because it wobbles really bad. There's that. There's our angle. And now we'll post up a photo of the skill stuff compared to this particular unit and go from there. Alright, so skill. Harbor Freight, Chicago Electric. Old Skill. 
Chicago Electric. This actually apparently came broken. So that right there is stress fractured down through. You can definitely feel the difference in the plastics. And the other thing I noticed is that this is the Harbor Freight, Chicago Electric. And this piece here, they've made wider. So if you take the skill one, it's not going to fit in there. Which is too bad because I like this one better. See, it just pops right up. So what we're going to do at this point is we're going to grab the base for the old skill. And we're going to see if it'll bolt up. Maybe run a couple of test cuts through this thing and see what it does. Alright, so at this point, the last thing to do is see exactly how noisy it is and how well it cuts with the stock blade in it. So we've got a piece of 2x4 here. One side is pretty nice and clean. The other side has a ginormous about inch to inch and a quarter knot in it. So we'll cut the nice side first. Then we'll directly cut through the knot and we'll see how that comes out. Then we've got some leftover cabinet plywood here from another build. It's probably 5.8 finished plywood and we'll see how well that cuts. As always, wear some sort of eye protection. Overgrown glasses, unfortunately, is all I have. Here we go. and first demonstration on this particular table saw. If this video was helpful, subscribe to my channel and for other videos of this nature and share this to anybody that might be wanting to buy one of these saws. Have a good day, guys.